We're back, boys. NFL is coming back, ain't it, Scatty? It's coming, baby. It's coming. <laughs> come back, Packers. Come back, Packers, baby. <laughs> yeah, come back, Packers. Yeah, if, uh, for a little uh, insight for people, we've been booking a trip for Europe, and uh, there was this hostel we were going to say it was called Come Back Packers. I told Scotty, I was like, we might end up getting a little bit of cum on our back if we end up staying there. So, <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. You can't roll up on your back there. you got to be sleeping with your face up. Well, actually, now that you might get a facial there. Huh? <laughs> That's where is that? Yeah. But, uh, hey, if you're tuned in today, you're tuned in for some NFL because uh, we're some DGENs, and we love the NFL, baby. We uh, – Big fans over here, and we're going to actually break down each of the uh, divisions today. We're going to start with the AFC today, and we're going to go through each of the divisions, figure out you know who we're thinking ends up going to take it home and who's going to be the ooh that stinky poo poo in the fucking bottom of the division. And uh, we'll give you a little bit of breakdown. Also, too, we'll give you just a little bit of spice for the fantasy on possible people you might want to pick up on each team. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. First, we're going to start with. The AFC East. This involves the Buffalo Bills, Miami Dolphins, New England, and the Jets. To get a little recap, last year Buffalo finished on top, Miami came in second, New England third, and Jets last. Uh, Scotty, let's uh, let's break this down. You want who do you want to start with for this division? Um, sorry, I was pulling up the uh, odds on my phone here. I wanted to okay. see what they were because I was going to craft a – based off our conversation, I was going to craft a divisional parlay. Maybe I'll do, like, one for the AFC and then one for the NFC and just split it like that. But Okay. Um, we can start – let's start with the Bills. The out, yeah. The outright dudes. Um, the Bills. Yeah. It's hard to bet against them, too. It's just, you know, you know what you're going to get with Josh Allen and – uh Coach, what's his name? McDermott is the head coach. Yes, he's actually been really good. Yeah, he's he is really good. Just an overall good fan base too. So it's it's going to be hard to beat the Bills this year. I feel like, but I mean, if you want to look at it, who I don't know, dude. This is such a tough division because the Patriots always play the division close, no matter who who they got. But then the Jets and Dolphins, like you have Tyree Kill and Tua, and then you have the Jets who just got Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, like. Could the Bills potentially be upset? I don't know, man. To they be honest, know. right right now they're over under for win totals ten and a half. Okay. So, um, as far as this team goes, I mean, this is a team they got to be angry. I mean, I feel like everyone thought last year they were going to make their run and they were going to possibly knock out Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow, whoever it was they ended up playing. Um, and actually make it to the Super Bowl this year. They, I mean, they had the whole Hamlin thing, too, happen. So you, you kind of thought, like, hey, this is like a crazy year for them, you know. Like, if it's going to be the year, it's the year. And, I mean, they were a really fraudulent team towards the back half of the season. And then going into playoffs, I mean, they started off with this amazing team, unbeatable. And then throughout the year, they just could not keep that energy there. And they just slowly started dying out. And by the time playoffs, I mean, I think – I can't remember the exact last playoff game they had, but I'm pretty sure it was not a close one. Um in that one. So, I mean, as far as people to target on this team, I'm looking at people like Diggs, Josh Allen, of course, uh, possibly Cook, um, depending on the running back scenario, because I believe they have Damian Harris, who came off the Patriots from there and has joined that team. Uh, He'd be good in the kind of red zone area, but I feel like Cook's going to take a little bit bigger role this year. And I think that's about all I'm thinking. Maybe pick up their defense, but I'd be honest, I don't. I might want to stay away from their defense because I mean, once you think that this division is going to be a lot of scoring, I feel like. What do you th- What do you make of Dawson Knox? See, that's the thing. I don't know what to do with Dawson Knox. I believe too they drafted a tight end this year, so that should be interesting to see. I feel like Dawson Knox is a later round guy. If you're so, for instance, if you pick up, you pick up somebody who's like kind of a waiver wire type tight end. You don't go for one of the big three um, or big four, I guess, whatever you think of it. But if you don't pick up one of the real top tight ends or tier one tight ends, then maybe Dawson Knox is a good play towards the back half of your draft. But I don't know. I mean, I think he's just a tight, a mediocre tight end that is on a is tied to a really good uh, passer uh, or just QB who likes to throw. I just say maybe he shouldn't say really good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. the Bill. I feel like all the pressure is on the Bills this year to perform. Everyone kind of expects it from them, which could be the downfall. I don't know. It's it's That division is going to be probably, I think, one of the closest divisions just based off the talent. 
I don't know, man. I feel like there's more pressure on the Jets because, like, they're this team that's always complaining uh, about not having the QB, not having everything. I mean, they have everything they've ever begged for, and now it's like, is it going to happen? Aaron Rodgers, I feel like he's got to be under a lot of pressure this year. But it's the Jets. That's what you're forgetting. Uh, Rob, I don't like. I don't like Rob Sala. I, I I don't like. I don't like their head coach. I think he's ass. <laughs> um, but yeah. I mean, I guess we can transition to the transition to the Jets here. All right, let's um, talk about them Jets. Isn't it weird how they play in East Rutherford, New Jersey, but they're called the New York Jets? It is a little weird. That's to be honest, I didn't weird. even know they were from there until you said that. Yeah, but um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers obvious pickup this year. Everyone's heard of it. it yeah. Just depends on how he's going to play. I mean, is he going to play up to the standard of how he was in Green Bay? I mean, you saw what he did with wide receivers who uh, who aren't no names. Like he made Alan Lazard a big name. He made a bunch of wide receivers for the Packers big names. Um, yeah, I mean, look at Christian Watson last year. He, he was like him yeah. and Romeo Dobbs were, were entry level people. And uh, I mean, Christian Watson, he was having an Amon Ra kind of back half of the year and was really tearing it up. It should be interesting. It's kind of crazy to think, dude. You probably forget about this, but like I think it was. It's been, only been within a year or so since he won the MVP. So. Um, yeah, I mean he's got good, he's got some good weapons this year too, and their defense isn't. I don't think it's going to be too shabby. Yeah. Um, so I, that's this division, like I said, is just so hard for me to pick. I really don't know because each team has weapons. It's just who's going to utilize those weapons the best. Yeah. And I think because I now I'm kind of talking myself out of the pick in the Jets because they were they were going to be my pick to win the division this year with yeah. the whole Aaron Rodgers thing. But well, hold on, hold on that pick. Don't say it quite yet. But well, I know. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just saying, how well is Aaron Rodgers going to mesh with his teammates? You know. Now they did bring in. Um, they brought in what's his name, um, Hackett from uh, Denver. So Hackett used to be Aaron Rodgers' old coach in Green Bay, QB coach, and he left Denver. Everyone saw what happened in Denver. It was a shit show. Uh, is there going to be a rekindle of what uh, they were able to do in Green Bay, possibly in the Jets? Because the reason why I was, I'm curious is like. Rob, like Robert Sala, for instance, I don't think there's a lot of defensive uh, head coaches that are really like tearing it up as much as like the mm-hmm. offensive-minded people who are really getting it done and doing real cool stuff nowadays. Like for instance, like Andy Reid and uh, people like Dougie P and other stuff. So it's it's interesting to see how it's going to play out. Uh, their win total right now is nine and a half too. Ooh, I think in terms of familiarity, I think. I think right now, just based off if I had to pick between the Jets and the Bills, I yeah. think the Bills will win the division just because Josh Allen and the boys have been a solid uh, group for three, four, four plus years now. And yeah, they know they know what it takes to win in that division. So yeah. that that right now, just between those two teams, don't factor the Dolphins, don't factor the Patriots. I'm leaning the Bills just because okay. of the whole familiarity aspect. Yeah. Um, do you agree with that, or you think? What, what are you thinking? I'm I'm holding off to the end, baby. I'll let you know after I roll down all these teams, baby. I can't give it out that quick. Come on now. Uh, uh, but uh, let's let's jump to the uh, let's jump to uh, actually let's jump to the Patriots. We haven't said a single word about them or mentioned anything about them. Their current total win or over under is seven and a half. Bill Belichick's team is trying to round out a kind of bad season they had last year and trying to turn something in, but. Uh, Oh, that. Hold up. Let's see oh, what happened, bro? Right? What's going on here, bud? There we go. I had some commercial come on. <laughs> uh, that's weird. Yeah, uh, I think it was when I was uh, watching the thing. But, yeah, what do you think about all uh, Patriots? Yeah, I think probably last place, if I'm being honest. I mean, Mac Jones and the boys – uh, he was hurt last year. Bailey Zappi had to come in and play. I mean, they have decent weapons like Gusecki, um They just picked up. And um, who else is on their team? Ramondre Stevenson, um, yeah. Hunter Henry. I mean, it's just a lot of mid-level guys. I don't know. They've always been known to, you know, play tough on the defensive end. But I don't know. I, I mean, they could surprise a lot of people this year, but I just I can't see it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's – I'll be honest, I, I'm not sure how their season's going to shake out. I think they're always going to be a tough team to play at home, and they're going to have a good defense. So they might be able to pull a win or so. Maybe they pull one over on Miami maybe or possibly the Jets. I don't see them beating the Bills, though. 
Um, I feel like the Bills have kind of had their number since Allen's came in and Tom Brady's came out. So I don't know if that – Huh? What did you say that win total was? Win total for New England is seven and a half. Ooh, that's such a tough line. I mean, oh, it's oh. yeah. It really depends on strength of schedule. I'm not pulling up their whole entire schedule right now. We're just kind of diving into just how we're breaking it down per division. Uh, if y'all want us to break it down, as far as looking down more into it, we can do that. But I mean, I don't know. I I don't. I could. I could see his team going under that for sure. Um, but I was going to say like seven eight wins. Damn. Yeah, it it just depends because like. It depends how many teams are going to play who are not fundamentally sound. I feel like the teams who are who understand the fundamentals and can work together, they're going to beat New England. But if you're not together and you're kind of a sporadic, streaky team, I really don't think I don't think you're going to get a dub against New England, especially at home, because they're just they're going to beat you through the clock and using their defense and playing oh, to their yeah. own abilities. They're not they're You're not this. Is no idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Mac Jones is no idiot. Like, they play good football. But, yeah. like you said, it comes down to the fundamentals. That's a good point. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's that's kind of how I see New England. Um, but people to pick up on this team, Ramondre Stevenson's the only one I can really think of. And then maybe the defense. Yeah. But the problem is I don't want to pick up any defenses in this division, dude. I mean, it's just like I feel like there's going to be a lot of points scored in this Three division, points, yeah. I think. But I don't know. So, all right. We'll, uh, we'll round to the next team. We'll give it a roll. Uh, the last team in this AFC East is the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I mean, this team's loaded up, but can Tua stay healthy? I feel like that's the biggest question. Win total right now is right at nine and a half. And um, I don't know. It's it's interesting to see. I mean, you, you saw what they did at the beginning of the year last year. Tua went down. Obviously not the same team at all. Um, but... It's, it's interesting to take a look at this team. I think Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle are obviously the huge targets on this squad. Um, trying to really think of anybody else. The fi- figuring out if maybe if um, Dalvin Cook ends up getting signed in by them, I don't know yet. That's a possibility because uh, he's floating out there. I don't think Zeke had any opportunities possibly going there. So, I mean, those are really the only people I'm targeting on this team. But, I mean, Miami's a good team. What do you think? Yeah. Um... This is also a toss-up, this team. I think it's basically a three-way race for the divisional round. And um, I think out of all the teams in this division, who has the best chance of beating the Bills? I think it is the Dolphins, just yeah. because of the tools. Um, and the – the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the versatility, but the uh, the creativity of Mike McDaniel. Um Yes, yeah. like he's super creative in terms of his play schemes. He plays to his players' strengths. Like you see, the amount of times uh, Tyree Kill goes in motion behind line of scrimmage, and just like these trick plays, wild plays, that's kind of McDaniel's like forte. And yeah, he 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 tailors a game plan uh, against the team he's playing. Like it's not the same. They don't do the same game plan no matter who they're playing. They tailor it to the team they're playing, which is probably how every coach does it. But that's yeah. just that's the vibe I get from him. But um, I just think it depends on can Tua stay healthy. Yeah. If Tua can stay healthy, I think they win the division. But Tua being healthy, you saw how he was last year, is no guarantee. <laughs> basically, his whole career, he's not been healthy. Dude, yeah. So, basically, I think it comes down to if you're willing to bet on Tua being healthy. If you think Tua's going to be healthy, then bet on the Dolphins. I think they win the division. If, okay. if you're not too confident in Tua, I maybe take the Bills. So where's your rank on this whole division? Give me the whole rank uh, from top to bottom. Where's everybody? Playing? I think Bills, Dolphins, Jets, Pats. All right. Ones? All right. I mean, I – Wait, what's the, what's the Dolphins win total? Nine, nine and a half for both Jets and Dolphins, seven and a half for Patriots, ten and a half for the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills. All right, I'm going to create this parlay here. That's what I'm trying to do on my phone real quick. Um, give me your lock of the division to win the division, and then give me your lock and win totals. What do you think is the thing that's going to happen? See, the problem is win total. I can't give that because i got to break down their whole schedule. Um, I mean, if we're going to be honest here, I think if anyone you could go over on would probably be the Dolphins. I feel like they can get 10 wins on a 16-game season. Um, but – are you worried about the health of Tua? 
that's the only thing. It's really like if he gets hit hard, is he gonna is he gonna have like another like really bad situation yeah. where he can't play? Because I mean, I feel like if that happens anymore, he's gonna he's done for. He's not gonna come back to football after that. So yeah. that's interesting on how that might go. Um, I feel like this team could be really scary if Tua went down and then they just ended up dragging for the rest of the year and then picked up some, like a Drake May or the guy. Um, shit, I can't, Caleb Williams too. So that could be an interesting situation. I don't think that'll happen because they're too good of a team. But I got this right now. I think the way the division is going to shake out, it's going to come down to the end, like you're saying, right? And mm-hmm. if this comes down to the end, and I'm assuming these divisional games are towards the end, playing in the conditions of it being cold, like playing in Buffalo – or just you know how the season progresses. It's not going to be that Miami sun all the time. I think yep. Buffalo Bills will end up merging ahead because I don't think the Jets have the capability to overtake the Buffalo Bills within the division because I don't I don't see them beating the Dolphins and the Bills more than the Bills beating the Miami and Jets. Um, I yep. think Aaron Rodgers is good, but I don't – the first-year whole thing, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's going to be like a first-year – Tampa Bay for Tom Brady. I don't. I don't think it's going to be like that. I mean, it depends. I think if they get if they get Bryce Hall healthy, that can help out a lot. But right now, they're he's. I can't remember what he's on the pub um, right now. So right now, lock. I'm gonna say Buffalo Bills win this division, and I think Miami gets the over on the win total. I think. I, I mean, I don't know. That doesn't make sense though, because like if I say over, then yeah, that would mean yeah. Buffalo would have to uh, hit the over. So, who do you think like gets second? Do your ranking. All right. Bill. So I'm gonna say Bills go first. Okay. I'm gonna say. You know what? I'm gonna say Bills. Bills, Jets, Miami, New England. And yeah. I'm gonna say that because I don't know if two is gonna stay healthy all year. Yeah, I that's agree. that's the only reason. If he if he stays healthy, Dolphins will pursue. But if not. Uh, I think that New England team is going to be a pretty sound team, and they got a really good defense. Uh, so later in the year, too, that's going to help out a lot. And um, I mean, yeah, I mean, they got they got some corners, man. They can cover old Tyreek and some of them. I mean, maybe not the whole time, but they can do their thing. So that's how that's how I'm going with that. Okay. All right, let's move on. Ooh, let's go to uh, let's go to this little stinky division, the AFC North. Uh, you ever heard of it? <laughs> Browns. <laughs> oh yeah, Browns. Yeah. So this division currently, let's see how it finished last year. Last year it finished Cincinnati, Ravens, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. Dang, Cleveland had a total of seven wins last year, and Pittsburgh came in actually over five hundred. Okay, Ravens ten. That's still crazy. Ravens ended up getting ten wins last year, considering that situation. Um, and then yeah, so. Uh, how you feeling? You're the you're the king of this, so you should you should feel the best as far as your opinion on this. Well, just so our audience is aware, I'm a Browns fan, so this is <laughs> going to be a great surprise. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to pick the Browns to win the division. Oh um, my god! Fuck out of here. I just think I think it depends on Deshaun Watson, right? I think it depends on how he does. He was asked last year, but he also didn't play a he didn't play a football game for 600 some days. Um, so he was trying to get back in the groove of things, and I hope last year prompted that swing. Um, and from what I'm seeing on Twitter, I follow a bunch of Browns accounts and shit like that. What I've been seeing on uh, summer camps is he's yeah. meshing really good with the team, and he's made leaps and bounds up to, compared to where, where he was last year, Yeah, uh, which I think is good. Um, I've seen him do a couple, like, offensive plays, uh, just – of him like throwing the ball during like seven on sevens, he's looked good. Yeah, they were saying that too about Russell Wilson. Yeah, they say about every quarterback. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think just, I don't know. It depends on the rest of the division too. I mean, look at the Ravens; they have OBJ now. Um, yeah, plus Lamar Jackson, plus Mark Andrews, plus Harbaugh. That's like a deadly combo. Yeah, um, the Bengals have Joe Burr. They have Jamar Chase. They have Joe Mixon. That's a cold combo. The Steelers. Are gonna just suck ass. I mean, they have Kane. <laughs> like, they'll they'll go five hundred at least. The Steelers always manage to find a way to like. It's, go it's just Mike Tomlin, man. They manage to go five five hundred. They, they always they always find a way. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I think the. I'm just gonna put out my pick now. I think the Browns are gonna win the division. Oh my god! Well, you heard it here first. You can go ahead and turn off this podcast because we're gonna go with my boys. Holy shit! Well. 
the AFC North. Okay, let's talk about the Browns. Let's bust in. We started talking about Deshaun Watson. He could be a possible value in fantasy. I think he's more valuable later. Don't pick him up too early because there's a lot of people similar to him that you can find value in. But um, I feel like I feel like too though people are picking him up earlier. Just Deshaun Watson fans. Um, he's good. I think I'll be honest. I really think Nick Chubb's going to have a year this year. I think he's he's one of the sole guys in the backfield. But you also uh, got a guy. What's his last name? It's like Ford something. Isaiah Ford. Is it is that is the running back? I know you're talking about um, Isaiah Ford. Might have played for Tech football actually. Hold on. Damn boy, you don't even know you're a running back. Y'all drafted, or it might have even been drafted. But it's it's whoever's behind Chubb. It's like Ford something. Oh, Jerome Ford. Sorry, Jerome Ford. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll be honest. I think uh, I think he's going to end up playing a little bit more of a role because Nick Chubb. I mean, nowadays when you do 16, 16 games, that's pretty hard on a running back to do all season and try to have them fresh for a playoff. Because Cleveland is a team that's going. They're trying to make the playoffs. And they're trying to make a playoff run. They're not looking. Well, I shouldn't say they're not looking to just make a playoff. They're, I think they're really trying to make a move, and they showed that with the contract with Deshaun Watson. So. I got a feeling he's gonna Ford's gonna play a little bit of role, but Nick Chubb, I feel like he's gonna have a year, man. Hunt's out of there. Uh, he might do some more patch, pass catching, possibly. Uh, but I mean, he's a beast. He's been a beast since he's been in the league. I think he's a really good pickup. Um, Amari Cooper is someone I'm trying to figure out. If you're banking on Deshaun Watson having a good year, and I feel like you got to pick up Amari Cooper, and you got to think about David Njoku because I feel like David Njoku could be a good late round tight end that you could have that also could provide a lot of value, especially if you're believing in Deshaun Watson. So I really think besides Nick Chubb, I think if your belief is that you believe in Deshaun Watson, he's coming back this year and he's got a full year with him, he's training all that, then you need to also pick up some people like Amari and David and the Joker. What do you think? Yeah, well, we also picked up uh, Elijah Moore too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think he's pretty good. He didn't really get a good chance there in New York, and then also his yeah. QBs were fucking. Yeah, our wide receiver room is a little weak this year, but I mean, because I mean, we, we used to have like Travis Landry, OBJ, um, with Amari. Yeah. Uh, Amari Cooper was after that, but uh, it, I mean, it'll be it'll be interesting interesting to see. Our offensive line yeah. has always been really good. Um, then we have well, Miles. You got a uh, you got Peoples Jones who can stretch the field too, right? Yeah, DPJ, yeah, he's he's good for like longer routes. Yeah, um, I don't know. Well, it'll it'll be interesting to see this team how they do. It'd be now, what did what did y'all do to combat your run defense? Because I feel like every time when I play fantasy, if I play Cleveland, dude, I was like, oh, I'm starting all the running backs for them. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, well, the problem with that was um, Joke was out all last year. Jeremiah okay. was the Kamara or some shit. He was a big uh, like outside linebacker, middle linebacker guy who. Okay. Uh, who would like be like a hawk on the QB? But yeah, I don't know. We also have um, Denzel Ward was hurt for part of the year, and yeah. then but that's a huge guy for all. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I know that's more passing, but run defense. That's it's always been our weakness. It's just people run all over us. I don't know if it'll be any better this year, to be honest. Denzel Ward, he was a Pro Bowler, wasn't he? Yeah, dude, he's he's good. We call him the Warden. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we will but, switch off Cleveland. We'll, we'll probably come back to them when we start figuring out where everybody's going to fall. But uh, I think the lock of this division for uh, win total is Pittsburgh. Right now they're eight and a half. They play a 16-game season. Listen they, play, listen, they play a 16-game season, bro. Mike Tomlin teams, look how many teams have not went un, uh, over 500. I mean, under 500, sorry. Every team goes over 500. I think that's a lock because a and a half. I mean, it, dude, look at the team they had last year, bro. Kenny Pickett gets another year in the league. I think he's he's either going to be just as good, if not better, than last year. They get T.J. Watt back, which is a huge thing on defense. And I think, too, just with that whole team, George Pickens is coming into this next year. Um, Pat Firemuth, hopefully he'll be a little bit more healthier. Um, I think – I think that team gets nine wins. I don't know. It'll be tough. I mean, I'm looking at their win totals now. Um, you're right. They pretty much either go – looks like they haven't – what is it? You said seven and a half? It's eight and a half, so that's over 500. Looks like the last time they only got 
eight and a half. Uh, looks like the only time they got eight wins last in the season was was in 2019, and before that it was 2013. Okay. So. Yeah, but who? Did they, but in 2019, that was a year with like Rudolph, wasn't it? Mason Rudolph, yeah. Yeah, it was like freaking <laughs> buns. I mean, I got I'm, Kenny Pickett's not. I don't think he is like fantastic, but he's not Mason Rudolph. He's a lot better than Mason Rudolph. No, I mean they. Yeah, they could. Let me see what those odds are. I may include that on the parlay there. Yeah. I, don't I think that wouldn't be a bad one. I'm not gonna lie, looking here, uh, we haven't talked about him yet, but Ravens nine and a half is kind of interesting too. Um, yeah, that's, that almost seems like too good to be true though. They're only offering nine and a half. It does. It you does know? a little bit. It just seems a little fishy. It does seem a little fishy. I think it's because maybe because Cincinnati's at eleven and a half, they got them so high. Maybe that's taken away from their win total. Where if in the Buffalo Bills situation, it was ten and a half, and then they had the Jets in nine and a half, um, and Miami nine and a half. Maybe that's what's factoring into that. Yeah, they could. I'm trying to get the. Uh, I want to see what the win Because I'll be honest, I could see I could see the Ravens stealing a win from uh, Joe Burrow. I mean, Huntley almost did it in the playoffs. Yeah. If you wouldn't have tried to jump over the fucking line with the damn ball, that was the most yeah, stupidest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to stick with the Browns, dude. I think Deshaun Watson is too good of a player to have another shitty year. Yeah. And if he does, he just needs to leave the fucking team. <laughs> dude, you're going to be pissed off if he has another bad year. But, okay, talking about Pittsburgh, though. People I would pick up, and uh, also, too, make sure to give your opinions on the fantasy, like who you think you'd pick up. I think – Najee Harris could possibly be a pickup. He is – so when you pick him up, he's not someone who's going to give you the super high ceiling. He's just he's just got such a, like a high floor to where he's just going to get – Mike Tomlin loves a little bell cow running back. He's, he's had that for a lot of his people. And um, he's going to get fed. Now, how efficient he is, I don't know. Pass catching, we'll see. I mean, Najee is a pass catcher, and he gets a lot of carries. He at least gets probably anywhere from 15 to 20, I'd assume, a game. Yeah. So – He's going to give you a lot. He's kind of like a Joe Mixon almost. He's going to give you a lot, but is he going to do anything with it? I don't know. Um, but possible, depending on where he falls. Um, but to be honest, that's probably the only thing I'm picking up out of that squad. I mean, what do you think? I don't know, dude. Just, this whole division is just like – it could go so many ways. Like the Steelers could be when the Steelers when you don't think the Steelers are going to be good, they're good. When you don't think the Ravens are going to be good, they're going to be good. When you don't think the Bengals are going to be good, they're going to be good. And <laughs> it's just like the last division. It's like there's so many toss ups to where it could happen one of two ways. And I, that's why I feel like the Browns could be a good value pick because right now they're plus three twenty five. All right, all right, hey, hey, we get your Browns. Hey, tell me fantasy fantasy value right. on Steelers. Where is the fantasy um, value? Is there any though? I Maybe. think Najee Harris has fantasy value, depending Not, where you get him. Yeah. Even then, I don't know. What's their one uh, wide receiver? Maybe George uh, Pickens. George Pickens, I, I think for deeper leagues, that's a good pick. I, I um, don't know if I pick – um. what's the other guy? That's Deontay Johnson. Yeah, I don't know if I pick him. He had a rough year last nah. year. Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling Deontay at all. I wouldn't um, pick him. I think maybe yeah. George Pickens, like in a flex role, would be good. Okay. I got you. All right, let's roll to the Baltimore Ravens. Mr. Grable's team right now at nine and a half. I feel like this team is similar to Jets. They've had a lot of offseason hype going on. You know, Lamar's gotten paid. OBJ is there now. They also picked up Zay Flowers in the draft. I mean, I think they just uh, actually sent out Marlon Humphreys. Uh, or not Marlon Humphreys. Um, what's the other guy's name? Shoot. What's the uh, what's the uh, I think it might have been a cornerback. Is it? It's not Peterson, is it? Uh, Patrick they just tra- they just traded somebody. Hold up, Ravens I can't remember. trade. Uh, la, 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 la. But yeah, give me a little talk on the Ravens while I look this up real quick. All right. Um, to be honest, the Browns are going to solve them. Oh my God, you fucking nut. I mean, I, I could see um, – what did you say the win total was, nine and a half? Yes. 
That's that's such a fishy line to me. I I don't know if I see. It does it, seem very fishy considering all the hype. Yeah, all the hype. I, with OBJ, it's like OBJ's when he was on the Browns, bro. He was like poison to the to the team. So yeah. I don't know. You know, I don't know how they're gonna mesh with each other. You know, I I mean, two strong. There's very strong personalities on that team too. So I don't I don't know. And OBJ likes to get shit on. So. I don't know. <laughs> he does both well, get shit on this time of year, huh? Yeah. But uh, do you find that who they traded away? Yeah, so I'm looking up. God, I'm pretty uh-huh. slow I'm trying to pick this up. Um, yeah, I'm not. For some reason, I can't figure out. It was one of the guys off um, the Ravens defense. I can't remember. But besides the fact, um, I'm curious to see how Lamar's going to play this year. He's gotten paid. Now it's time to shine. Um, and he's got. I feel like he's got a big role to fill because this team is more than capable of making it to the playoffs. Um, past that point, I'm not sure. I've never been someone to really trust in Lamar after watching him in the playoffs. He just is always like a shaky kind of person for me. I think he's a lot of fun to watch during the regular season. And he's going to win some games, but I don't know. Some about the playoffs, man. I just I don't see him winning three games or he, and I don't see him getting a bye so they're not getting a bye so I don't see them winning three games to make it to Super Bowl um, consistently so I'm expected yeah. playing really good teams so I don't know how they're going to end up shaking out I think the value in this team if you can get Lamar maybe a little later that's like that last tier between him and like Fields are the last tier of like running QBs I feel like so it depends where you get him at um, OBJ I don't know if I'll be drafting him much because I think he's I think he's good, but I just I don't know. It's like it's on a run first kind of team. They did get a new offensive coordinator apparently who likes who's going to pass it more. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. Um, Mark Andrews, I don't know. I'm, dude, I'm not a big like first couple round tight end. What about you? I'm not either, but he seems like it has to almost pick either Kelsey or Andrews just because they put up like more points than my wide receivers combined when I draft them. Yeah, I mean, like, I see the Kelsey, but my thing is just like, God, I feel like if Lamar goes and like you get a Huntley, then it's, I mean, I don't know. You can say that about a lot of people, but um, definitely interesting there. And then I feel like Zay Flowers is not a bad pickup late because a lot of times you get these rookie wide receivers. Uh, sometimes they tend to flourish. I mean, look at Chris Olave. I feel like between yeah. Zay Flowers, you got Jackson Jigbu, Jordan Addison. Those are, I feel like, the top kind of people as far as people to watch out for. I'm not sure how I feel about Addison. I feel like TJ Hawkinson is the second go-to for Kirk there, but we'll see. Uh, I feel like Jig Boo is going to be pretty good. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of my end. But let's wrap it up talking about the Bengals. They're at 11 and a half. Joey B is currently on the sideline right now, boy. That calf, that calf strained. What do you, uh, what do you, what do you make of this? Eleven and a half is a lot. It is a lot. Eleven and a half. Is a lot. <laughs> I don't see it happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's. It, it is a lot. It is a lot. I mean that means that means they're winning twelve games and only losing four. Which I believe last year did they win twelve? Let's see. They did win. They won twelve last year and clinched. So, I mean I have to look at their schedule, but. I'm not. Gonna, I could see. I could see them sweeping the division and losing one game to Baltimore. <laughs> I want to see if I can get like their win totals because I'll fucking bet that under. Will you? But I mean, it, dude. I mean, if Joey goes down or doesn't play first week, I mean, yeah, that that win total is looking really good. I feel like because that's. I don't know who the backup is, but um, it, it's not under Joey. 11, 11 and a half is one sixty two. Oh, you can't parlay that. Damn. So, who are you picking fantasy wise as far as out of this team? Who do you like? Chase, obviously. Um, I had Mixon last year. He was asked, so I would stay away from him. <laughs> okay. Chase, and then who else? Honestly, their kicker's pretty solid. Um, maybe him. Mc, is it McPherson? Or is that the coach? No, I he, can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, who is their kicker? Zach something? Okay. Or I, I don't know. Okay. But um, who's, the, who's their other wide receiver that's pretty good? That so was, you got a couple. Did, you got did, Higgins and you got Boyd. Boyd. Yeah, Tyler Boyd. Yeah, he was good. Um, Higgins ain't bad either. He's a good uh, wide no, receiver too. 
Yeah, they're all like any anybody there is a good flex option. I think Chase is gonna kill it this year. As long as he's got Joe Burr thrown to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope I hope he can stay healthy. Uh what about Joe Burr? You didn't say anything about him. You drafting him? Man. He's he's been good, yeah. I don't know. I feel like he might go early though. You okay. Know? So are you are you more of an early QB or a late QB kind of guy? I'm more of an early QB, but I don't know if I'd pick him first. Okay. Like, I don't know if you just curious, just curious. Who is your early QBs like you like? Ooh. My early QBs are like Jalen, maybe, just because of what he did last year. Okay. Lamar, Patty. Probably just those three. Okay. So you're not picking up Allen? Maybe he's too high? Yeah, I don't know if I'd pick up Allen. I'd want like a dual threat. Because a dual threat can score a lot of points. Bro, Allen's a dual threat. What do you mean, bro? Not as much as Lamar or Jalen. Well, Jaylen I mean, a- I, yeah, but I'm saying, like, I mean, look at the goal line, bro. I mean, he's I, – he, I, I, w- yeah. I would consider too. Allen a dual threat. He's tough, too. He's not going to get hurt. So, you got that. Yeah. He's like a Cam Newton almost. Yeah. But I don't know. That's just me. Okay. Well, I, so, I hey, we play. just uh, – so we wrapped it up. Uh, we know Cleveland's coming first for you, but uh, where's everybody else falling at? Um, Steelers the last, probably Cleveland, Browns, Ravens, or sorry, Cleveland, um, Bengals, Ravens, Steelers. Damn. Okay. All right. I hear you. I so the real one that y'all really need to listen to is this one. So. Yeah, uh, very much. Unfortunately, Scatty is someone who uh, sometimes gets disappointed, uh, and uh, this is going to be a disappointing year for him. I think right now Cincinnati's taking it, and it's going to be a... Baltimore's coming in. Uh, Baltimore's coming in second. Jim Harbaugh's going to get him there. If he got him there with Huntley last year, he can get him there this yeah. year with Lamar. Uh, but I really, unless. Bengals get hurt, dude. I don't see Joe Burr not winning this division. And then it comes down to the very end, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'll say Cleveland comes in, but it's like it's maybe one game they're beating uh, Pittsburgh by. I don't really – I think it's going to be a battle for the bottom between them, and I think Pittsburgh's going to end up coming out 500-plus. So it's just if Cleveland comes out more than 500, I think they're going to end up winning uh, or beating Steelers. Uh, but I don't – I see them missing playoffs this year. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they could. It's Very it's fun. only because it's like I I just worry so much about Deshaun Watson now. Deshaun, he is a he was a really good QB, and like when you look at other people in the past, talking about like people who took breaks or had a like uh, injury or whatever happened. Well, the thing with Deshaun, it's like there's so much like bad cloud around like his name. Like when you think of Deshaun Watson, at least for me, I think of a lot of off field like stuff rather than like what he did in Texans because. It's just like what's recent, I guess, is what comes to my mind. So it's a little bit different situation for him. I feel like he does have a lot of pressure this year on him. Um, I'm, and I hope he does good because NFL does uh, NFL's a lot better when QBs play better. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. But the trust, I'm just not sure. Like you said, your wide receiver room, if Cooper gets locked up, can Peoples-Jones or David Joku or someone else step up to be that wide receiver too that he's going to need? And, I mean, Sean Watts can do that. I mean, he did that in Texans when he had DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller. I mean, it's a very, it's kind of a similar situation. I don't think – I'm not saying Amari Cooper's DeAndre Hopkins, but I think it's a similar enough setup to where he can throw for a lot of yards. I mean, look at the freaking running back they have. That's going to open up so much room. So, I think they really need to utilize Chubb this year and then it's going to set up everything that Deshaun Watson can be good at, and he just he just got to come in. So it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. But I could see Cleveland coming in front of Ravens, but I don't see him overtaking Cincinnati, though. I don't I don't know. I, mean, I could see him maybe winning the game, but the division's going to be tough. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I'm, I'm just biased, so. And the thing you know. is, dude, this division, like you said, bro, I think I, – I mean – a lot of divisional games are like this, but this division especially, I feel like any team can win any game as far as oh, yeah. in between the division, dude. Yeah. In between the division, bro, this team, it's always like a toss-up between who's going to win. It's always gets played super tough, um, and a lot of these teams play tough. So, yeah, it's I feel like it's a toss-up every time. Yeah, that's for sure. 
All right. Well, let's go to the AFC South, possibly one of the worst divisions in football this year. Uh, yeah, it's a fucking joke. But uh, I don't know. I mean, there's, I feel like there's still some value to be made of it in the 2022 season. My boy Dougie P took it over. It's kind of crazy to think Jacksonville Jaguars and Steelers had the same record last year. But um, Jacksonville Jaguars, they got the dub. Tennessee Titans came in second. Indianapolis Colts third. And Houston Texans fourth. Where should we start, baby? I don't know if I want to start this division. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I know. yeah. Let's start with the let's start with the Buccaneers. Buccaneers? What are you talking about? Wait, I thought you said the uh, NFC South. I said A- oh, sorry, AFC South. AFC South. Oh, oh, AFC South. Yeah, oh. AFC South. Jags. I might I might have said that. I don't know, but uh, Jags, yeah, NFC, NFC South, Colts, and Texans. So. Right, I- the NFC yeah. South is way worse than this division. Sorry. But. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that one's pretty bad, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's curious to see how this one's going to go. We'll, fall with it. Uh, we'll start with the top, Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, okay. You got Mr. Uh, Mr. Lawrence coming back, man. Everyone said he's going to make that yeah. step this year. Um, what do you think he of that? Could. He could. He could. You saw how he played against the, uh, the Chargers last year in the playoff game. That was pretty good. Um, well, the fourth quarter, not the other three. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what but I mean. that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's all that matters is the fourth yeah. quarter. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it comes down to Doug Peterson's a good coach. Yeah. Um, but I think it ultimately comes down to you know um, how Trevor Lawrence plays. He has the weapons. I think he has a good running back. He has a good wide receiving core. I think it just comes down to the quarterback play, which is basically you could say the same thing about every team, but. I think with this team especially, I think it comes down to how T-Law is going to play. Yeah. Have you seen uh, Mr. Kevin Ridley in uh, camp at all? Uh, yes, actually. I saw that one video where he was like, Zay Jones was running the round. <laughs> yeah, bro. That dude was hauling, and he was cutting it quick. So I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm just curious. Do you draft him or no? Calvin? Yeah. Yeah. I think he could be a good play. It just depends I on think how he could be. If you believe in T Law, then Callen's a good play. Yeah. yeah. And that's a that's great advice. I mean, like for anyone who's drafting, don't always believe in maybe like a player. Like figure out who the QB is or how they're gonna end up getting their own and figure out if you believe in them or if you see a an in route for them getting their own too. Uh, cause yeah. I mean you have some players, like I feel like Devontae Adams, I feel like you know he's going to get his own some way, somehow, even though he's with Jimmy G. Uh, but, like, for situations like Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence, like in order to believe in those wide receivers, you kind of got to believe in those in those QBs because a lot of those wide receivers aren't good enough to really be on their own and just, like, be wide, wide open like how Devontae can get. So I, I think Calvin Ridley is a good value if you can get him low. Um no one likes drafting Kirk, but he's not a bad, like, fill-in wide receiver, possible flex. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, depending where you want him. I feel like he's going in that Justin Herbert range, and I'd rather have Justin Herbert. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, I, you you had Justin Herbert at one point, didn't you, last year? I did, yeah. He, was, he, was, he put up uh, – I think I traded for him. He put up, like, a solid, like, 18 to 25 every game. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. But that was with none of his receivers. I think his receivers started coming back into play more towards the end of the season. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting uh, there. But I think between those and then ETN, depending where you get ETN at, he's a really good pickup too. Hopefully he gets more pass catching this year because I think he caught like two passes last year. It was like nothing. Yeah. Um, so I think they're going to be a good team. Uh, let's see what their win total is. Nine and a half. They got nine wins last year. I could definitely see them beating that. Uh, Cause, well, I don't know though. Like it's, I'm cur- the reason why I say I don't know is I'm curious how Tennessee is going to come out. So let's jump. Let's jump into Tennessee. Okay. What do you? What's your feeling on Tennessee this year? I I don't like them to be honest. You don't uh, like them at all. I, the only thing I like about Tennessee is Mike Vrabel, but I think as far as because they got rid of. Um, do they still have Derrick Henry? They still do, right? Yeah, they still got D. Henry. Okay, yeah, but he's like the whole team, though. Who's their quarterback again? So okay. it'll be Ryan and Tannehill. But if you look at Tannehill's, like he's not a flashy guy, but he gets the job done as far as yeah. wins go. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, as far as the division goes, I think if you just narrow it down to Titans and Jaguars, I think Jaguars take it. But, I mean, don't be surprised the Titans are good. Um, yeah. 2016, they've had five consecutive winning seasons. So, I mean, they're, not, I mean, they're a good team like the Steelers. Like, as far like what you were saying about the Steelers, how they always just find a way to get it done, get, like, yeah. a winning season. They're, that's kind of how that reminds, like, Mike Vrabel and uh, Mike Tomlin are kind of somewhat, somewhere in that, that aspect. Yeah. I'm going to make a bold statement. Okay. I think if Ryan, if we don't see Will Levis at all this year, Tennessee is going to win this division. And that's just based on really good coaching. And I feel like I, I'm not sure about T-Law yet. I think he's made some strides. I guess, but he's still, like, super sketchy, man. He, even that game in the Chiefs, I mean, he did all right, but he didn't do anything crazy. And they got – I mean, I, I know they lost by double digits. That whole Chargers game, bro, that should have never happened. If it wasn't for such a really bad Chargers defense um, – and I feel like, too, they just didn't capitalize on a lot of things um, off the turnovers, I believe, on the interceptions. But I think T-Law had, like, four interceptions or something going into halftime. It was, like, something really ridiculous, really bad. Um, yeah. And I mean, he's not Patrick Mahomes, so that comeback, I feel like, that was something like – it's kind of like a foundation in his career as far as early uh, part of it. But at the same time, it's like I feel like a lot of things went their way. And the Jags have a really good defense that they leaned on in some games last year that helped them out. I know it helped them get a dub from uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, at one point. And um, there was also a game against Tennessee that the, the – the, uh, the defense took over, and that was when um, – who was the old guy? It was one of the old guys from uh, Cleveland who had been there at one point. Um, shit, I can't remember the QB's name. He's like a bald guy. He looks like most albino. Deshaun Kaiser or no? Kaiser. It might be him, yeah. But he look, he's like completely bald, uh, mixed guy, and he, he almost looks like he doesn't even have eyebrows. Yeah, I remember who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I think he was in QB there. So, I mean, that yeah, – and that's the thing, like – yeah, so I mean, I just I just don't know about this Jacksonville team. I feel like everyone's really thinking they're going to be really good, um, but I feel like that's like a, a not sure team. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you think about how look at the division, and they're only nine and a half wins. I feel like that's kind of low. Yeah, I think they could be good. Just be, I think uh, Trevor Lawrence has a few years under his belt in the NFL already, and I think that's super important. He's kind of coming into his own. Yeah. So I think he'll have a good year this year. Okay. All right. As far as Tennessee goes, fantasy value, Derrick Henry, I think Hopkins could possibly be a good value. Um, mm-hmm. and then that tight end, I can't remember the guy's name. He's a, he's a, the main tight end there for Tennessee. He's a pretty decent value too. Um, but I don't know. What, is there anyone else really? I don't think so. I think you got it. Yeah, I think that's about all. And a lot of these values, like when we say this, uh, we can dive into a deeper podcast talking about where value is at in each round of a uh, draft. But most of the value is just depending where they're at. But I feel like Derrick Henry's a guy I'm picking up just because um, I believe this year he gets the Houston Texans during the playoff season. So yeah. uh, I like that a lot. Indianapolis Colts, how are we feeling? Jonathan Taylor. He's on the pub, I think. That's all. Oh, is he really? Yeah. I did not know that, but Colts probably one of the worst teams in football. Oh honest. really? This year? Yeah. Okay. Say, I don't. I don't. My boy, <laughs> shout out Wiley Cox, VCU alum. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know why. I think he's a big team. dude. Yeah, he is. I don't, I don't like them this year. You don't believe in uh, Anthony Richardson? No. I don't believe in anybody on that team. <laughs> not even, uh, not even if you get a chance at uh, JT. Not even. No, uh, I think with JT there, we saw what they did last year. They were just a phony team. Um, they were supposed to win a lot of games. They didn't, and when they did win, they weren't supposed to win. So, I yeah, just can't see them uh, doing anything this year. Obviously. Okay. I, I don't know if they got anything to help on their defense because I believe that was a big liability last year. Oh, they got Gilmore. Or, no, uh, Gilmore, he went to um, Dallas. He's, he's not even on – yeah. I think that defense is going to be very ugly. Um, but I could see this team getting in some shootouts, and I could see some value being held between 
uh, Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce. I don't know about the tight end Cox because, like, there's just so many tight ends that kind of fall under his same category, so they kind of just blend in, and that's just based on waiver wire figuring out what happens. I feel like JT, I don't know. I, I get the – I don't really like JT as much, and it's not because I don't like him. It's because I don't like their line. Their line sucks from what I remember. So, I don't know. But I think I think Anthony Richardson could be uh, some good value. And the only reason I say that is because – Look at people like Cam Newton in his first year, um, and I'm trying to think of others, but that's just one that comes to mind, like people who are running QBs who were not efficient throwing, and their value holds really good in PPR. So I think I think there could be some possibility. I mean, like look at Jalen. Obviously Jalen is not a Patrick Mahomes or a Joe Burrow, but since he uses his legs, look, look where it gets him as far as value. So – that should be interesting, but uh, yeah, we'll move on them. I don't think Colts are really that great either. Currently, six and a half is their win total. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, Houston Texans. <laughs> also, one of the worst teams in football. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, there's no fantasy value besides that running back that's on their team. Damian Pierce. Yeah. Okay. Other than him, I wouldn't really say anything. That that team is going to struggle to get like six wins. I think I think Nico Collins is a good pickup. He's one of the wide receivers there. Um, and the reason why is because this team is going to be in some throw-it situations because they're going to get behind. They're not going to be able to run Damian Pierce like they think they're going to be able to. And um, this, I don't think the defense is as good to hold them in games like that. I think they got a mediocre defense, but nothing substantial. They did draft the one kid first round. I can't remember his name. Um, he's a pretty good guy. He'll develop pretty good. But they got I think they got a couple more uh, years before they become something. But – I like C.J. Stroud, though. He's a – I feel like he's a very uh, gamer type of guy. You know, he's not someone who's going to uh, – I guess I guess he's not someone who's going to, like, blow you off, like, just by looking on paper and everything. But he's going to show up at game time, and he's going to usually more than likely actually show up and have some uh, – I, yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But. I just It's hard for new people in the league, rookies. Yeah, I mean, no it is. They are, it's hard to do well. So, yeah. I don't know. I just See, don't that, I, yeah, that's why I think there's going to be a lot of slinging going on on this team. But let's wrap this division up. Pin it from top to bottom. What's your what's your uh, situations? I'm just going to go with the betting odds. I think that's pretty accurate. I think you know the Jaguars take it home. Titans finish second. Colts are third, and Texans are dead last. Okay. Te- Texans are dead last. Okay. So. I think as far as this goes, I think I'm going to say, even though I said earlier, I don't know if Tannehill's going to play all year. That's the only reason. Like, if he does play all year, I think Tennessee wins it, but I don't think he's going to play all year. So I'm going to take the Jags. It's going to be Jags, Tennessee, Texans, Colts. I think Texans might end up beating Colts in a couple games. And, uh, I don't think so. I don't know. But it's That's kind of like it's a battle of the worst, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it is what it is. But I, I just don't like the Tex or Colts defense at all. Uh, completely <laughs> trash. Uh, especially losing some people, and I don't know. I just don't like them. So to wrap up the AFC, we got the AFC West. I feel like this is one of the divisions to kind of watch out for in the AFC. Um, you got the Chiefs, you got the Chargers, you got Vegas, and you got Denver, baby. There's a lot of uh, a lot of situations that might happen. Surprise! I didn't realize Chargers got ten wins last year, but yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be an interesting little league. What do you think? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. I think they win it just based off uh, previous. Well, we're break, we gotta break it. We gotta break down the team. Break down the team. Jump into the right. jump. Let's jump into Kansas City. Kansas City, yeah. I mean, yeah. what everyone already knows about Kansas City, though, like Patty Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Everyone, ever, it's the same old story year after year. Um, Besides them, is there any other value? Any other fantasy value? Yeah. Not really. I don't think so. Okay. Buckhart's okay. a decent kicker. He might get you a couple, like, 15-point weeks. But other than that, I mean, Andy Reid, he, he's just such a good coach. He knows yeah. that team. Patty Mahomes knows that team. Travis Kelsey knows that team. I mean, that's it. That I think that's probably the lock of the year in terms of divisional winners. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you. I mean, we'll we'll reinstate it here at the very end. But, yeah, I mean, they're a lock. I think it's going to be interesting to see what that wide receiver room is going to be like. Sky Moore coming into his second year. They drafted somebody, and I believe they still have people's – or not people's Jones, but – Bad with Scantley, but I, the wide receiver, I feel like it's going to be like picking one person each time. Like each week, it's going to be one person. Next week, it's going to be one person. Huh? Um, I don't even think it matters for them just because of who Patrick Mahomes is. That's what I'm saying. He's going to spread it so much, but he is going to turn it up on Travis Kelsey. Uh, I'm curious to see how running backs going to end up happening because you got people like McKinnon, uh, Isaiah Pacheca, and Clyde Edwards and Lair who are all going to be running that threesome kind of together. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that's going to roll out. Isaiah Pacheco, he had a really good year. He ended up doing really good there in the playoff run. McKinnon ended up being like top running back for the last four weeks, I believe, uh, for fantasy at the very end. So I don't know. I don't even know what's going to happen with Edwards Hilaire. He had such a – it was kind of weird. Do you remember how it happened last year? He had like – a couple, he'd have like less than 10 carries, only a couple receptions, but yet he would score like 20 points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was uh, very touchdown dependent. I wouldn't really pick any of their running backs just based off the fact that they have a three person core right now and who yeah. they don't know. You don't know who's going to get the ball. So I wouldn't really draft. I would stay away from picking a Chiefs running back. Well, I feel like people are thinking about it because it's like, it's not like it's a. Three running back on any team. It's three running backs with Patrick Mahomes. It was like they're just scoring like nonstop. So you know, it's yeah. like even if they like if they get one, like you think about it, like Travis is going to get at least one. Um, then you got someone on the running backs going to eventually get one, I assume. And then wide receiver, someone's going to get one. So and it is kind of like picking, figuring out who's going to be. But I feel like. I feel like it's not a bad bet to take some of these people just because they're constantly, constantly finding ways to score and they can do it quick. Um, yeah. But we will jump to the Chargers currently at – that's kind of interesting. Kansas City is 11.5, and, and the Bengals are at 11.5. Um, I would probably take that over there on Kansas City. But Los Angeles Chargers, 10 and a, or 9.5. Uh, I feel like this is a year where Justin Herbert – Hopefully they can keep everybody healthy. If they keep everybody healthy, I feel like he's got to he's got to continue to make strides like T. Law needs to do too. Um, Austin Eckler, I think he's coming into his contract here. I believe uh, he's kind of huh. I didn't say anything. Oh my bad. Uh, and he's also got to figure out too. So the running backs right now, it's a big situation where people aren't getting paid. But I mean, the value of running back. The problem is you can have someone be good for five years and then just pick up someone in the draft and. Their, their value just is, doesn't last long at all. So it's hard to pay people. And the way rookie contracts work, well, by that time they end up on that, like, five-ish year, four-ish year, whatever. I mean, that contract's coming up, and then it's like, do I really want to resign them? Because I know they're not going to be worth nothing in the next five years because they're going to end up fading away. Uh, except people like Melvin Gordon who ended up doing that. Um, shoot, I'm trying to think. Well, Ezekiel Elliott was another one got overpaid. So I think fantasy value – Mike Williams is always not a bad flex play. Keenan Allen, Herbert, and Eckler. That's that's what I'm thinking. What do you think? Yeah, I'm going to um, probably shock you here. I think the uh, Chargers have a better year this year. Just just purely based off the fact that Justin, Bur- Justin Herbert um, signed that large contract extension, that huge contract extension. I think it's yeah. going to get – I think he's going to feel the pressure. I think he's going to play bad. Oh, okay. You think he's gonna play bad? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what do you so you think that under is gonna happen? I do. Okay. I how do. how many wins do you think it's gonna be under? Like one or two I or think go, I think they go under five hundred. Really? They go under five hundred. Damn Carson, do you hear this? I think, <laughs> like a seven, this? I think like a six and ten season or like a seven and eleven like I, I don't know. I d I don't think they seven and nine season, I d I don't know. I don't think they do good. It is interesting because I don't know if they did anything as far as the defense for the running. That was another defense where I was playing against the Chargers. I was like, start my running back because you can yeah. run it up against them. Um, so I think Eckler, I think Eckler will pick up for a lot of that. That slack. What I'm talking about, Herbert not doing well, but there's only so much one man can do. Yeah, I think they got They got to keep people healthy. They did draft the wide receiver, but he's from TCU. I 
I don't know. I wasn't really big on him. He didn't really have much hands. But everyone's been showing off in camp all his hands and stuff. But it's just camp. I don't know. I don't really trust a lot of that. I more trust as far as camp goes, like the pub and watching people, figuring out where people are going to end up, if they're going to be playing week one or not. That's kind of where I like to pay attention to camp. But it should be interesting. I don't know if they're going to get above – I don't see him getting – I mean, I don't know. They might get 10 wins. I mean, thinking all the stuff they went through last year. Because at one point, Herbert was playing with his ribs, like, broken or whatever for how many games? Like four or five. Yeah. And, I mean, and they didn't have all of their um, wide receivers at the time, too. He was doing – I think at one point, like, Joshua Palmer was the one. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't. I'm curious how it's going to go. But I think if they can stay relatively healthy because the people that they have on the team are bound to get hurt. But I think if Herbert can stay healthy and they can stay – I think they – I'm, I'm going to go back on my word. I think they do get 10, but it might be just 10. I mean, yeah. I don't – They say that. Yeah. But, I mean, like you said, though, I mean, this, this is a team that – it could be interesting to see how it's going to hurt. I don't think Herbert's going to feel too much – I mean, he's got pressure, but he seems like he seems like a dude that doesn't feel it like that. But um, I don't know. It's I don't see him being a Super Bowl team at all or anything no. like that. Uh, no, so. All right, let's go to the Denver Broncos. Got new faces in here. Yeah. Eight and a half is the total. No, Ben DiNucci, bro. Russell Wilson, Jared Stidham. No, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> you don't think uh, Sean Payton's going to be the uh, the whisper? I do not think he's going to be the truth, no. Um, I think first year, I mean, just based off how they played last year, dude, I just – it's hard. It's very hard for me to, to trust a team that's going to get 10 wins, you know. Yeah. They were so bad last year. And now Russell Wilson, granted, had an off year, I think. But, I mean, they have good – I mean, they have a good team, like Corden Sutland and uh, Jerry Judy and um, Kyle Fuller, like, on defense. Like, uh, I mean – I don't know, dude. I mean, they could be good, but do I trust it? Not really. Well, their defense is freaking nasty considering Russell Wilson for, uh, like, all that time he was just turning the ball over or just giving it right back. The defense stayed on lock, and they were on the field a lot. Um, yeah. I just – I don't know about Denver. It's like – because you, you got to start thinking about win totals. you got to think about in division. I don't see him beating Kansas City. I could see him maybe splitting with Chargers. And splitting with Vegas, I don't know. Vegas might end up being the bottom of this division because I'm just not sure they didn't get anything changed on defense. And then we know Jimmy G probably is not going to last a full season. Who comes after that? I don't know. And I don't really like their coach on Vegas. Um, but I think Denver. You got um, Jamal Williams. I think I think it was his name. Uh, running back. He's coming back. Yeah. Um, and then, like you were talking about, those are some value. I'm not drafting Russell Wilson. Screw that. I I did that last year. I just hit bad blood. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. I, I could see this going under. Like you said, I could see it going under maybe the next year a little bit. I don't know. I just I feel like Russell's just – just Russell. I don't know. He's like – he's at this point and he just needs to let it go. So no, I, I don't think you're going to have a good year. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't like Denver. Sorry, I'm playing future baby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, let's jump to Vegas. Vegas seven and a half. I feel like this is a team that could easily go under this. Um, I don't know. It's Jimmy G's not bad, but it's just like, dude, what does this team have? It's like they have no defense. They have an offense, I guess. Uh, but right now, currently. Um, Oh, God, what's his name? The running back, Jacobs. He took a flight out of Vegas and is, like, chilling somewhere because I don't think he's been paid. So that's kind of a hold up there. There will be something that happen and he'll end up playing. But I don't know. This team is just very sus. So I, I don't have much high hopes for him. What do you think? I don't either. I think they're tight end. What's that one dude? Uh, Walt, Darren Waller. Yeah. He struggled majorly last year. He was hurt. I had him on fantasy. I he is, uh, he's not on there anymore. He's in uh, New York. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's yeah, the Giants. Well, who the fuck do they have then? Nobody. Well, they got Devontae and Hunter Renfro. <laughs> yes. And then what's that one guy's name? Mac Hollins? Oh, uh, I don't know. He has like a big afro almost. Uh, he wasn't bad through some points. But, yeah, I mean, they really don't have anybody. So, I feel like people are going to be just double teaming. Uh, Devontae. Devontae. But Devontae's still going to get his own. He's a, yeah, I think – I'll be honest. I think Devontae is the 
is the best wide receiver in the league right now. Um, and, I mean, he's proved it for a long time. It's just, it's just like, I mean, yeah, you can look at people like Justin Jefferson and people like Jamar Chase, but, like, I feel like a lot of them are, like, people who aren't, like, a, Devontae Adams can have his own. He can, He's like a partial A.J. Brown, but, yeah, he got, like, he's also not, he's got hands and he can cut really good, too. A.J. Brown plays more bully ball where, you know, Devontae can dice you up on his, on his routes. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll, we'll, do, we'll just jump into the whole entire um, – ranking of this but uh yeah go ahead and roll your ranking out scatty yeah i think uh chiefs obviously and yeah. then chargers i'm just gonna go with the betting odds i think it's probably right chiefs chargers hold on a second i think i'm gonna go chiefs broncos chargers i was about to say i was like uh if you think they're going under man throw them broncos yeah. up there i think justin herbert really struggles this year so chiefs broncos chargers raiders okay no. i think i'm gonna <sighs> I'll be honest, I think I'm going to roll it the way it is. Kansas, Los Angeles, Denver, and then Las Vegas. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I feel like everything Chargers went through last year to get 10 wins was pretty good. But that was also with a really bad Denver team. And I don't think Sean McVay is going to change it around for Russell. I mean, I don't know. It's like there's going to be some things happen in Denver for that to change. Javante can come back. Then get Greg Dolce a little bit more developed and Jerry Judy come on his own and – I think that team could be good, but I think I think it's going to be intermingled between the Chargers and the Broncos. Vegas is going to come really low. I think they're going to be a pretty shitty team this year. So, um, yeah, let's say Kansas City, Los Angeles, Broncos, Vegas. We'll say that just to be a little different, but uh, yeah, that's the that's the AFC, sir. And uh, yeah, if y'all like this, I'll be sure to tune in. If y'all stayed here to this long, damn, it's been an hour. We've been uh, cruising on this thing, so. Uh, yeah, we're going to do the NFC next, and uh, you also let us know uh, if you like it, don't like it, or you think our picks are trash or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, it's been a full breakdown, baby. Hopefully this can help you all out. So uh, you got anything else to say, Daddy? We're good, baby. That was a good breakdown. <laughs> all right. Well, let's break it down after hours, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll see you later, boy. Adios.